again, this is Yunim, and today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Islam, a little bit about the Quran when it comes to Islam, and some of the Islam when it comes versus Christianity, versus Judaism, versus Mormonism, um, and maybe any of the other religions. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do our quick intro and get with it. So after taking a little time this uh, last week or two to read over some of uh, the Quran, uh, basically for those that don't know, uh, Islam uh, uses the Quran as their holy book, and that is where they get all their scriptures from as far as their practices and beliefs. Now you got to understand that, like the uh, the Holy Bible, the Christian Bible, or even the Mormon Bible, um, it is the Word of God and or of Muhammad the Prophet who brought Islam into the um, into the world. When somebody burns the Quran, Quran, they're burning the actual word of God and this upsets the Muslims uh, just as uh, maybe somebody taking a Bible and tearing the pages out and wiping their butt with it uh, for all to see uh, this kind of upsets the Christians and you know how could you how could you do that to the Bible um, you gotta understand though within our country we, we do have freedom of speech so uh, we get to say what I want what we want uh, as long as it's not like hateful speech uh, currently a lot of countries are trying to get it where if you speak against somebody's religion it is considered hateful speech and therefore is banned or you can be arrested for saying such things and a lot of uh, places where there are Muslims are trying to get that law enacted so you can't speak out against their religion um, however uh, even though they want that as a law because that's kind of an extremist thing, most of those extremists are going around and killing people for speaking out against uh, Muhammad, which I think killing is a bad thing. Now, when it comes to um, Islam versus Christianity versus uh, Judaism, uh, even the Mormons, uh, once again, we hear the same old saying that this is the one and true religion and if it not followed uh, basically you're going to hell so all Christians all Jews all Mormons uh, you're going to hell according to the Quran according to Allah according to Muhammad do I believe that the Quran is the uh, actual word of uh, a God no those that are Christian Jews maybe even Mormons um, you're supposed to pay a higher tax basically you get to hold on to your belief however you you should be uh, penalized with a higher tax. Pagans, sorry dudes, uh, either you convert or you get your head chopped off. Would, uh, would a Christian or a Jew or a Mormon be put to death? Well, of course, after a while, you're going to see that where people are going to be, uh, say that you own a business, and they're not going to be buying from you. you probably be, uh, your place will probably be torched. Um, just kind of imagine what it was like for the Jews during World War II. Basically, uh, everybody would have to wear a certain mark on them to identify what religion they were part of. So when you went in to go pay for something, you would pay a higher tax. And of course, uh, if we did it like the IRS here in the States, uh, every year when it came around tax time, you would pay a, a higher percentage than everybody else. So basically, you would be in tax to a point where you'd be poor. Um, so let's decided. Uh, let's say that you decide to go ahead and convert to be a Muslim. One for Unfortunately, Allah has made it where uh, your death to the word of Islam because uh, non-believers, that's how it is, it actually says this in the Quran, that non-believers are, are made death to the word of the Quran. And, but later on, it, it contradicts and says that at no point in time did Allah ever uh, reject anybody when it comes to converting. But uh, a couple of scriptures do point out within the Quran of how you cannot hear or understand uh, the Quran because uh, you're never another religion. Uh, one of the things you also hear is how if you do not speak Arabic, you never really get to understand the Quran and how it's written because to translate it, it loses meaning. The same could be said about the uh, the Torah. Uh, once it's translated, it takes on a little bit of different meaning when it comes to the Christian Bible. And uh, uh, there's a lot to say about the Christian Bible that we won't go into right now. Um, but when it comes to Islam, basically it's the one and true religion and versus the others. And of course, if you don't believe in it, you're going to hell to summarize it all up. Now, how did Muhammad get all this information? Well, when he was about 40 years old, uh, he was in a cave and uh, an angel 
or a, a figure appeared to him. I'm not going to say an angel uh, because he was he thought he was actually going to be possessed there for a little while. And this figure began to tell him to recite. Uh, he admitted that he could not read or could not write. And, and everybody knew this, that he could not read and not, could not write. Uh, but once again, the figure told him to recite. And then he understood that he was supposed to repeat after this this figure. Well, the figure explained who he was, uh, Gabriel, and that basically Allah had sent him down to give him the word. Uh, basically, everybody had screwed it up once again through history. You know, the Jews had it up to a point, and then um, and the Christians picked it up. Apparently, they, they screwed it up, and but now uh, Muhammad came down to uh, make it all straight. And then, of course, later on, the Mormons claimed that once again uh, the Christians screwed it up, and um, so Joseph Smith was sent. But let's go back to Islam. Within each religion, you have your extremists, okay? And that's what we see a lot on TV when it comes to the extremists. Uh, and there are even some that are uh, kind of moderate, like in the middle. But, you know, once you get a crowd together and everybody gets all riled up, uh, you got uh, pretty much a riot on your hands, and, and everybody's going to be, you know, death to America, death to Americans, and things like that. Treat others the way that you want to be treated. So no more than I want somebody to come in and kill me, uh, I'm not going to go in and kill somebody. Now, just because I'm part of a particular race or society, you cannot classify me as believing everything that everybody else believes within that race or that society. And therefore, you have to judge me individually uh, if I'm a good person. Just because I don't believe in your faith or maybe I speak out against your faith does not mean that I'm, I'm a bad person. I just don't believe when it comes to the Quran or Muhammad or Allah. Uh, I don't believe in Allah. And I do believe that there was uh, Muhammad. And I do believe that he thought he saw stuff. And, and maybe he didn't. Um, he may have just, you know, made all this up and came out and kind of threw it out out there. Because one of the things that's very interesting to me is that uh, when he went to Jerusalem to let the Jews know that he was the true prophet, of Allah, the Jews rejected him. Wow, they just did that like, you know, 600 years before when it came to the thought of Jesus being the Son of God. So they rejected. Uh, Muhammad came up with the idea, or maybe Gabriel told him, or maybe Allah told him through Gabriel that, hey, from now on, you run into some Jews, go ahead and, uh, and, and kill them. And so that's what they did. Uh, when they would, they would ambush uh, Jews, and what they would do is uh, capture them. And, of course, they take all the women and children for themselves and behead the, the men. You always want to get rid of the men. I mean, you want to keep the virgin women and stuff like that for yourself. Hey, Christians did the same thing, too, so I guess you're good in that area also. So, in case you didn't understand what I was trying to tie together there, is that at one point, this was Muhammad's mission. He was to go in, let the Jews know that uh, a true prophet was here from, from Allah, from God, and was here to uh, preach the word. But uh, the Jews rejected him. So, his tone totally changed to, okay, I'm here to, I'm here to preach the word to you. I'm representing God. And the Jews are like, no, we don't believe you. Go away. Go away. And he's like, no, no, I'm, I'm really, really, I am, I am. And they're like, no, no, go away, go away. They're throwing shoes or whatever they throw. And <laughs> so uh, his tone takes a 180 and 180 and decides to, uh, hey, uh, either he decided that you're supposed to kill off Jews or Gabriel told him that Allah wants him to do this because the way the Jews were acting, that he was totally done with them, that they're no longer the chosen ones, which I think is the original um, context of the where uh, the Muslims draw their faith from is from the Old Testament also, just kind of like Christianity using the Old Testament. Uh, I do believe the Muslims used a little bit of the Torah, and they just told a little bit of a different story that uh, taking the word God out and putting in Allah and changed things around that they favor the Muslim faith. So, uh, Alicia, I do believe is how you say her name, uh, the six-year-old that married Muhammad. Now, this is a big controversy over this because she's six and was married off to Muhammad. Um, and then once she turned nine, uh, they had sex. So how can anybody that, you know, sees this wedding of a 50-year-old guy and a 6-year-old uh, have any problem with it? I mean, come on. You know, that's, that's love. That's true love right there. I mean, and, and, and the honor of 
being with a, a prophet. Uh, and, and he waited till he was 53 before he went ahead and had sex with her. Uh, so, you know, what a joyous day that must have been for her to actually finally, after maybe three years of, of bugging him to, you know, let's go ahead and get this a marriage official that, uh, you know, he finally gave in. I mean, he must have fought hard to go against this. And I bet you he had to be talking to Gabriel and Allah every night. And they were probably giving him hell, you know, about not even doing anything with this marriage. And. You know, he probably fought it for like three years trying to tell him, hey, Allah, Gabriel, well, this is not a good idea. This is a six-year-old and pretty like a year later, it's a seven-year-old. And, you know, hey, come on, guys, this is a, it's an eight-year-old. And then, you know, at nine years, he goes ahead and uh, makes the marriage official. Uh, I mean, he, he probably was getting it from her, Gabriel, and Allah, all of them just bugging him and egging him on. But he stayed, you know, strong against uh, the whole ideal of it uh, until, you know, he just broke down and couldn't take it anymore and just went ahead and made the marriage official. And uh, she was his favorite wife. And, you know, 53 years old, nine year old. Yeah, I'm like, you know, you see it in the news all the time. Uh, 18 year old marries some 60 year old, 65 year old billionaire. Uh, it's pretty common for that age difference right there um, yeah it's common it happens so much and so totally off note and everything like that uh, just uh, because I put uh, Catholic school boys in my search for when it comes to videos uh, any of the pedophiles out there um, I, I don't totally uh, agree with you in any way shape or form but uh, uh, there's a particular religion I have in mind that you might be accepted in uh, actually two of them uh, one of them you get to be a priest which uh, you know that's Catholics and uh, the other one you and could be in the whole religion and society itself and be accepted you know you just uh, what would Muhammad do you know marry the nine-year-old and he would have as many wives as he wanted and you would be accepted you'd be good to go so uh, so long Rondo's got what plants crave. Yeah, it's got electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? It's what they use to make Brondo. Yeah, but why did they use them to make Brondo? Because Brondo's got electrolytes. <laughs>